Okay, everybody, welcome back to another Angular tutorial video. Really appreciate all of you that have been following along. And if you haven't and you want to be, uh, I do have a playlist that I've created from all of the videos of this tutorial from start to in the future finish. And you can follow along that way if you're interested or if you just want to learn about this one particular concept, maybe you can just watch this one. But I do recommend going through it all, especially if you want to learn Angular. And we've been going through the Tour of Heroes tutorial on Angular's website. And if that interests you, and I, I talk about other things I learn in code, and that's all this channel is, is when I learn things. And as I'm learning it, I come on this channel and I share it with you. If that sounds interesting, uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. My current goal is 1,000 subscribers. I think we'll make that in no time. And really appreciate all of you that have subscribed. And so we're going to add navigation with routing and there's a lot going on with routing but I'm just going to point out the basics and what basically you need to know just to get routing to work how you expect and I will have the tutorial link down below so you can go ahead and click this live example if you want to and this will show you what we end up wanting to have so we have two buttons here at the top this nav bar if you will and there's a dashboard and a heroes and you can see that the URL changes depending on the button I press and the view also changes. And this is one of the powers of a single page application is we're not actually refreshing data and loading up a new page. We're just changing what the user sees based on the route in the URL. And that's what we're going to be implementing in our uh, application. So let me go ahead and pull it up too. So here it is so far. And what we want to do is when I do slash heroes, we want it to go to this view. And then if I do slash something else, we want it to go and, and serve up that component instead. And so at the very beginning, when I created this Angular application, if you go to the first video, you'll see when it asked if I wanted to add routing, I went ahead and I said yes. And what it did is it basically did everything that they are doing right here. So if you didn't add routing, you can follow along with these steps right here in the tutorial and you'll be right where I currently am. But because I said yes, it did all of what, you know, the tutorial was doing for me. And we can go ahead and look at the app routing module typescript file. And you can see that there's a class called app routing module. And if we look in our app module file, you can see that the imports, the app routing module was placed in there for me when I hit yes. And the tutorial does a good job explaining what the different directives mean in all of this. And you can think of the four roots as it sets the root as the starting point when the application is running for the paths. And we're going to add to this routes array all of the different routes that we want the user to be able to use. And so really this routes array is the main thing that we really have to pay attention to and maybe add or remove some objects of this array. So a route object looks like this. There's going to be a path property. So this can be whatever you want the path to be. So if we go back to their demo application, this part right here, the slash dashboard, that's the path, but we don't have to actually explicitly write the first slash. It does that for us. We just have to say if we want to use dashboard, say that the path is dashboard and then tell it what component we want to display when that path is is used. So in our case, we're going to say the path is heroes. And then another property we have to set is what component are we showing? It is going to be the heroes component. And you can see it imported the heroes component for me. And now if I go to localhost 4200 slash heroes, it should show me the heroes component and then we should see everything that we see here in the HTML. So we should see the app detail and then this. However, there's one more thing we still need to do. We need to put a starting point for where this component is going to be displayed. So we're going to go back to our app component.html and where it says app heroes, we're not actually going to use that anymore. We are going to say router outlet. Just like that. And so every time we change the path to 
a, in our case, heroes, that's where the component is going to be displayed. And then if we added another route, um, which we will, it looks like, for the dashboard, so I'm assuming it'll be something like this. The path will be, you know, dashboard. And then we'll have the component that we'll have to make. And if we do slash dashboard instead, that's where it will render that view or that component is where this router outlet is. So you can think of this router outlet as a placeholder in the meantime until the user puts a path in the URL that's valid. And in fact, let's show it without the router outlet real quick. So I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to save and we can see the difference. So I'll bring it back up. And you can see right now we're just seeing the title because that's the only thing. We don't have any messages, so no messages are going to show below it. And we don't have uh, the app heroes or the router outlet right here. So it's just showing the title. But now you might be saying, well, you don't have slash heroes. Well, that's true. So let's do slash heroes. And you can see it still doesn't make a difference. Now, if I put that router outlet back and I save and it rebuilds, now, if we go slash heroes, you can see that the heroes component is now displayed. But if we go to just localhost 4200, nothing is going to be displayed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this partial that we made, keep it just like this. And now we have a basic routing setup, and we can add to these routes as we build components and want to display those components to the user. And then lastly, let's go to the app component. And let's above the router outlet and below the title, let's put a nav and then inside of that an anchor. And instead of an href, we're going to use Angular's router link. And all this is going to be is the path. So in our case, it's going to be slash heroes. You know, and then if we had more, we can do uh, another anchor and then do slash dashboard, which I'm assuming we will in the future. But for now, we just have the heroes component to display. So we're just going to use that. And let's bring it back over. And let's put heroes as the text. And now if we look at our application, you can see that we don't have a path right now. It's just localhost 4200. But if I click hero, it'll set that path for us. And now we went and showed this component. So that is how you can use the router link to allow the user to change um, routes and view different components. So hopefully that all makes sense. Like I said, the main thing you really have to worry about, in my opinion, is just adding routes at this point. And then it looks like in the next video, we're going to go ahead and create the dashboard component. And I'm assuming render or add that to the routes and be able to render that for the user. So stay tuned for that. Hope to see you there and uh, take care.